Good morning, brothers and sisters, and a happy Sabbath to you all. Before we start, let us bow down our heads in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning and we want to thank you for the blessing of the Sabbath day. Lord, I ask that as I'm about to share my testimony, that you'll send your spirit upon me, that whatever I speak, let me give no credit to myself, but I ask that you'll send humility in me and that all credit and praise may go to you. Pray this in your name. Amen. So, I just want to share a short portion of my testimony. Um, it goes all the way back when I was 11 years old. When I was 11, it was the first time that I was called to the ministry. Um, they called me to church. Well, it, was, it was actually by surprise. My sister was doing the Sabbath school program, and she had no one to do the mission story. And so I went up, and I did the mission story. And that was the beginning of it all. And from that point, I would see people would be telling me, the church members, they would be telling me, you know, you're going to be a pastor one day. And I would tell them no. And they kept, this went on and on for several years. And it went all the way through high school. And high school came, and I would contemplate pastorship. But then, you know, there were always so many other routes. Because I was always so much better at something else. And my desire for money, you know, I wanted to be rich, wealthy, have my own businesses. And when I looked at a pastor's salary, it wasn't for me. I, did, I didn't want that. And so I started focusing on accounting and economics, all the commercial subjects. But then I realized that it was all for the money. And so I decided, no, maybe I should just take up pastorship. And so afterwards, I went into computers. And I became very smart in computers. You know, I became very driven. Naturally, I'm a very competitive person. If I do something, if I start something, I don't do it to the best of my ability. I do it to be the best. I wanted to be the best in the school, in everything that I did. I wanted to be on top, and that was what I was striving for. I always strived to be the best, and this, this put great conflict in me because I would pray, and I would, feel, I would feel one thing. I knew something else in the back of my head, but then in the front of my head, all I could focus on was money, money, money and be the best, be better than everyone else. I knew in the back of my head, God was calling me, but I didn't want to listen. And so come grade 12, 2015, it was, it was probably the most difficult year for me because I had, to, I had to realize, I had to think to myself, this is my last year of school. Next year, my parents expect me to go to college. What am I going to do? And so I prayed about it. And I prayed the whole year, the whole year went by, and I had no answers. So I decided, you know, I'm going to take a gap year. I'm not going to study next year. But then I still wanted to be an IT engineer. I still wanted to go into computers and start up my own business. Because my friend had his own business as well, and we were going to go together. And then in December 2015, I was supposed to fly to another city. And in that city, I was supposed to take a position as a graphic designer. And at the same time, I was supposed to start studying IT engineering through correspondence. And so I prayed, I prayed, and then came the day. If I'm not mistaken, it is December 12. December 12 was a Sabbath. I was supposed to fly on December 10. But then I never went. Certain things came up. My parents said that I can't go, so I stayed back. And then. I went to church on that December 12th, and that's when everything changed. One of my old pastors, Pastor Ernie Rex, great guy, evangelist, he was preaching there, and so I always loved hearing his sermons. There was so much information in it, you know, because I, I wouldn't really, I, I would listen to sermon to gain information, to gain knowledge. And so I listened to the sermon, and it was a good sermon, but then afterwards I went to greet him, because he was a great friend of mine. And so I go up to him, and j just prior to that, I had prayed to God. I told him, you know, God, if you want me to go into the ministry, you need to show me. But if you don't show me, I'm going my own route. So I go up to him, and I greet him. And before he says anything, he just looks at me and he stops. And he says, Johnny, I have to tell you something. 
So I'm surprised. What, 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 what does he have to tell me? And so he looks me in the eye and he says that for several weeks, several months, I've been praying to God. I need to get rid of my library collection, my books. I'm getting old. I can't read these books. I can't do anything with them. And he says that the Lord has just impressed me with tears in his eyes. I've been praying to God and I asked him to show me the right person that I should give these books to. And the Lord has just shown me that you are the right guy. And it wasn't just normal books. It was books, religious books that he had collected over the years, over and over. Hundreds of books. And he had just given them all to me, worth several thousand hundred dollars. And at that moment, I just burst into tears. I knew that, you know, the life that I wanted, the money, the riches, everything, it wasn't for me. So the next year, 2016, March, I ended up going to the job in Cape Town, uh, in the other city. But before that, I went to an evangelistic series in, in February, on the 21st of February, 2016. I went to a training camp, and that was when everything changed. I went there, and I met a few people, people who had studied in AUP as well. And before that, I'd planned, I'd heard about studying in the Philippines, but I had no desire to come to the Philippines. And so they spoke to me and they encouraged me. They told me about the Philippines and still I didn't want to, but over time I would pray about it and I spoke to God about it. And things just happened over and over again. Things that led me to AUP. And then, you know, it was inevitable. I could see God calling me in every way of, his, of my life. I was in the other city for just a year, and then they instated me in certain positions in the church, and everything that I was doing, God kept on leading me back to Him. Over and over, I'd be assured and reassured that God was calling me to this path. So this is all that I'd like to share this morning. Thank you.